What's up guys? It is time for fourth crop hay. So my dad cut the hay on Saturday, but because it is fourth crop, we always end up getting storms. So we got a little storm that came through on Sunday and got it just wet enough that we weren't able to do it yesterday. So, but here's the problem. We're doing grain at the same time. So we don't have a whole lot of extra help. And we don't have a whole lot of extra equipment. So we normally run two choppers during hay, but we only have enough help to run one. So we're running one chopper, which means it's gonna take twice as long to do the hay. And yeah, we can't cut the fields as fast, so we can only cut as much with the swather in a day that we can do with the chopper in a day. So it's gonna take probably most of this week to get it done, especially since we didn't get to do it yesterday. I'm just over here next to my tractor. I'm about to go out and rake. I had to fill it up with fuel. See where we're at. Yeah, we're still filling up here. I want to see. Climbing, climbing. It was about half a tank. It'd probably take about 100 gallons, maybe a little more. But yeah, I'm about to go out and start raking fourth crop hay. So I'll show you a little bit of fourth crop. It is lighter. Fourth crop tends to not be quite as long and it has less stems, it's got more leaves in it, so it's, it's a lighter crop. But yeah, the problem with this late in the year, which it's a good thing that we don't bale our hay. People who bale their hay usually have a hard time getting fourth, fourth crop baled because it just stays so wet. You can't bale it if it's wet. Well, we do silage, so we put it back. So it can be pretty wet when we do it and put it up. The, as long as the bagger will take it, it'll go. But if it does get too wet, then we can't do it. It'll just plug up the bagger and we won't be able to get it done. But yeah, I'm about to go take my rake out in the field and uh, go do some raking. I had to grease it this morning. It's got a bunch of these spots where it says grease daily that I have to grease it every day. Uh, this rake is a Twin Star G37. It's a great rake. We had an old Twin Star that was the G27, I think. And that one couldn't go quite as fast. It would plug up a lot easier. So we got this one and it works really good. Uh, I highly recommend it if you're raking fairly wet hay. So I'm gonna go out into the tractor. It just got done fueling up and I'm gonna go start raking. Okay, I just got this thing folded out. And I'm raking now. You can see it raking it all up together back there nicely. These rows are definitely smaller than the other crops, but it is fourth crop, so that is to be expected. Okay, I've got some of the hay raked. Got that whole corner and all the opening rounds raked. I still got the whole pivot to do, but they just came out with the chopper. So he's over there chopping, Josh is in the chopper, and there's a truck right there. Because we're only running one chopper, we only are running three trucks instead of six, so it will take longer, but we'll get it done. That's what you have to do. You gotta get it done somehow. As a farmer, you kind of have to know how to do everything. So on the farm, we have a bunch of different pieces of equipment. Um, we don't all run all of the equipment. Uh, we we all know how to run most of the equipment, but there's usually like one thing that we don't know how to run that somebody else runs. But we're always jumping around jobs. Me, I jump between the rake, the bagger, the, the grain cart, the disc, the chisel plow. Uh, I'm gonna be running a vine beater this year for spuds to, to try and keep less spuds from going over the back of the harvester. Run a whole bunch of equipment. Uh, we also have, we have the choppers, the combine, the harvester, the crossover, there's a bunch of other stuff. And I run the harvester a little bit, but like Josh runs the chopper, he runs the, cho he runs the, the crossover. So we all kind of run different pieces of equipment, but we all have to know 
pretty much how to run everything. Just in case somebody isn't here or we need, they need to be traded off or something, we have to be able to keep it running. Um, on top of that, we also know how, we also have to know how to fix everything. All these pieces of equipment are very complicated in their own way. Um, I am a welder. I've been welding since high school. I've built multiple trailers and I fix a lot of equipment that needs to be welded. We also have a welder on the farm, Lloyd, who uh, he is an actual welder. I don't have any certifications. I've just been doing it for a long time. Um, but yeah, so when we have something that's a little too complicated for me, we call Lloyd. But yeah, we all have to know how to fix everything. Bearing sprockets. The only things that is hard to fix is when it's an electrical problem. Then we usually have to have the dealer come out and fix it. But keeping everything going takes a lot of time, a lot of work, and you have to know how to do a lot of stuff. But anyway, I might be in the in the bagger later this crop, so if I am, it'll be coming up next. All right, well, I didn't have to run the bagger, but here we have one of our choppers. We have had some chopper problems. Down in here, there's a slip clutch right there that was slipping, and we just, we've had lots of problems with that, so we just welded around the end of it so it won't slip. And then there was a, another slip clutch, this one they're putting on right here, that was doing the same thing. So again, they just welded the end of it. Uh, basically what it does is it'll get a big wad of hay up in here and it'll stop this from spinning, it'll just stop it. Everything will just slip on those slip clutches and it won't feed anything in. So that's one problem we've had that we're working on right now. I also have my rake over here now I've been raking a lot. We're on our last field and I go out to rake this morning. I turn it on and this motor right here just starts spinning around. Well, there's a bolt right there. It just sheared the bolts off. Almost came off the out of the splines there. It just sheared the bolts off and this was spinning around and it kind of cracked one of these hoses so it's leaking a little bit, but I'm just gonna put some more bolts in there We'll get it going and hopefully we can uh, get back going and finish hay today. I'm going to take this punch right now and try and get this bolt to come out. It's pretty loose. I think I can get it out, but I'm going to get that out, get this all back together, and then we'll go out and keep going. Yeah, I got the bolt out right there, but I can't get it to slide in, so I'm going to put a little bit of lube on that shaft and see if I can get it to get it to move. See if I can get it in here. Anyway. We got it all back together. Got the hoses facing the right way. We had to loosen this and pull the hoses back because it pulled them out. Got it all going back the right way. This is cracked here so I'm gonna go start it and see if it's leaking too bad. I think we can just cut this off and have somebody put a new end on it if we need to but if it's leaking a little bit we'll probably just go with it. So Let's go start up the tractor and see if it's uh, see if it's leaking. Oh, get up here! Start this bad boy up. I turn the hydraulics on. Grandpa's back there. Let's go see if it was leaking or not. Is it leaking? Pretty bad. See, it's just dripping down there. This looks like we got to put a new hose on, hose end. Got the new hose put on there this one they just cut the old end off crimped a new end on up at industrial hose and fitting and it pulled all these hoses that way when it sucked it out so i re-zip tied all this so it's all good to go we should be good i gotta go out because they've actually been chopping for about an hour they're probably caught up to what i already did so i gotta get going okay i'm back out here in the field there's a chopper right there 
they almost caught up to me. They did a lot of what I had done, but they are working on the outside rounds now. So I think I can keep up. The rake's working well. The hoses were a little stretched when I put it down. So I had to get out and loosen a fitting right there. So I could add a little bit more length to those. So they weren't so tight, but I think I can go fast enough to keep up, keep ahead of them. If I don't rake it, it takes them twice as long because they just have to pick up a single row. So thanks for joining me this hay crop. I think I'm gonna end it here. I'm gonna pass the chopper right here. He's coming next to me, see? I'm going faster than he is. But I think I'm gonna end it here and uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. It'll probably be a uh, manure video because after this we have to haul manure for about a week. And then we get into getting all the spud equipment ready and then we'll be in spud harvest after that. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great day. If you have any uh, content you want to see, let me know. Put it in the comments. Like, subscribe, share the video. We're trying to grow. So, anything helps. Have a great day.